Hey, it's Brett. Welcome back. We're up in the study today because it's a little too warm down in the garage. I just uh, wasn't planning on making this, but I had to do it. I went out this morning and uh, took uh, took my little forward swept uh, mini wing for a flight, and I was really having a great time with it. I mean, this is a great flying airplane, but there are some flight dynamics issues that I want to address, and I want to talk to folks about it, and also this is more... Honestly, uh, it's probably for my own reference on this um, because there's settings that uh, we use to get these airplanes to fly right, and they're really remarkable. We live in an incredible time in the sense that you know we have these radios with OpenTX and to the developers and the guys that make that. Um, it's a remarkable system. It gives us flight control systems that are akin to what we find in jets that didn't start getting manufactured until the 70s and 80s in terms of um, what I'm talking about in particular in this case is some of the, uh, it, I don't know, I would call it an auto trim feature. Um, in here it's, uh, it's the feature that allows you to delay an onset of a pitch trim moment and you could apply the same thing to roll uh, and you can delay the, the rate and the percentage uh, correlated to a throttle response. Um, what I'm talking about is these airplanes have a a degree of elevator pitch up that's applied to them. Uh, and as I told you, we have the uh, indicator on the back here on the um, uh, on the wing fences, uh, this little circle here that shows you uh, where to set your pitch trim at takeoff. In doing so, the airplane, you know, I take off typically at around about 70% throttle at thereabouts. It's a very gentle toss out of your hand, uh, again, always into the wind. Um, a gentle toss out of your hand and the airplane typically cli climbs out at a, uh, you know, a reasonable 15, 20 degree um, doze up uh, attitude and will climb straight and true as long as you have everything set up and your sub trim is set. And it's, it's a great experience. Now that said, you have a fair amount of pitch trim built in. Um, a trim setting on any airplane. And let's talk about going back to you know, the right flyer. I mean, any airplane without a flight computer of any kind built in, you set your pitch trim or your elevator, your angle at which your elevator is set to. Um, you know, and there's always a takeoff trim setting, uh, particularly when you get into larger airplanes. And what that pitch trim is set for is an airspeed. And if this is something, you know, I don't want to get too much of a flight instructor on you. Um, but it's something you should understand that your trim will determine the airspeed at which the airplane wants to cruise. And the reason being is at a stable and given power setting, it will establish an angle of attack. That angle of attack is maintained because remember the lifting force that the elevator is exerting on the nose. The elevator is pushing the aft of the airplane down. The airplane is rotating about its center of lift and the nose of the airplane is up. You will maintain a level flight attitude and you can trim the airplane in you know, any number of conditions and it will maintain that airspeed. Your climb is a function of excess power. So as long as you have that basic understanding that you trim for an airspeed and you climb because you have excess power, we're gonna do okay in this equation. Now, there are edge cases where all of this goes out the window and, and you know, you can find them in model aviation as well. But with that basic understanding, something to move forward into is the ability of modern radio systems to incorporate a, uh, an elevator pitch trim command change predicated on a throttle input. And I'll show you um, right now. I want to disarm it. When I apply throttle, you see my elevator drops. Uh, it will, it, in that case, it'll be dropping the nose down. And in this instance, I'm sorry, in this in instance, it's doing with a delay of 0.3 seconds. The factor at which I am dropping the elevator, and I'll put all this stuff on the screen, it's uh, at around 20% uh, for a pitch change. And then same thing, I have a, uh, and I'll put the exact amount, there is a delay for the recovery in a reduction of throttle where the nose of the airplane is picked up. So again, what happens when you cob the throttle and you put a bunch of ex extra power, if you maintain your elevator trim as is, of course the airplane is gonna wanna climb dramatically. But again, using coupling through uh, OpenTX, and you can do this with FR Sky and I'm sure everybody else too, but it's just really remarkable. You can couple in that pitch trim, pitch trim change 
and maintain a level flight attitude. Now remember, you need to factor in a delay. Um, and the reason for that delay is that this is a pusher airplane. There's no induced flow. There's no flight controls directly behind the propeller. So what you want to have, you need a delay of time to wait for the airplane to actually begin accelerating. Um, and again, you, uh, you get that organic airflow to which the flight controls are then reducing the angle of attack to trim for the new higher airspeed. Um, the way I've got it set up in here, and, and again, I mean, I trim it day by day, especially as I make changes to the airplanes, um, but it's, it's working so well and it gives the airplane just a beautiful feel um, and it's loads of fun. The other thing to think about, um, you know, I've made a slight change to this. I'll show you. This is the new version that I'm kind of flight testing. Um, what you can see, I'll pull up the old version here and put them side by side. That's the old version. New version is behind. If you take a look, you'll notice I'm increasing the cord of the elevons. So on the new version that I'm testing, the elevon has a much greater cord versus on the old version here, the elevon cord was more so conventional. It was, uh, it was slightly shorter. Um, a lot of guys are going to whine and moan and say, hey, you're going to, you're going to stall out your servos at, at high indicated airspeed. These are nine gram servos. They're not designed to put a lot of force. And, um, you know, there could be a lot of truth. But the, what you have to look at and consider in this, and again, this boils down to the beauty of these new flight controllers, and not flight controllers, radio control systems, and what we can integrate. We talk about elevons as a single flight control, but in actuality, they are two. They are ailerons, which provide roll for the airplane, and then an elevator, which provides pitch. With regards to roll, this airplane has a ridiculous roll rate, um, especially with ailerons, or yep, they're ailerons in this conversation. These are functioning as ailerons. They're enormous compared to some of my other airplanes. They're, they're much larger. So what do we do to diminish the response of the ailerons for roll because we still have the same arm, center of lift out to the center of the aerodynamic pressure being exerted, exerted by the flight control. You know, in this case, it's probably eight inches. And at the same time, you have the opposite aileron, you know, because ailerons, of course, here we go, you know, you have one going up and one deflecting down. So, you know, you have the opposite force being applied on the other wing, just exacerbating that roll. Well, again, this is the beauty of the modern radio system. And I know this is pedantic and 99% of you guys just won't even give two hoots. And that's cool. You already got it. Um, it's just something that, uh, you know, needs to be said and discussed. What I do in this is I turn down the roll authority. Basically, I, there's a percentage that you can put in there for how much roll you want to have equated to the movement of the flight controls. And, uh, you know, I'm not talking about Expo. This is literally the stick output. And again, I'll put these settings on the screen or in, in, the, in the notes. Um, I have my roll component diminished. I, I believe it's only, uh, let me see, standby one. Right now I'm allowing 40% total travel for the these control surfaces when it comes to roll. Uh, with regards to pitch, remember, we're short coupled. This is the reason that I increased the cord of the these flight control surfaces, the elevons. Let me go ahead and disable that. This is uh, not something I want to be playing with. Um, the reason that I dis the reason that I changed the size is I wanted to have better pitch control. But again, remember, you're limited by the arm, the distance between the center of lift and the effective center of the pressure changes that are occurring because of your elevators. Since this is such a short distance here to effectively there, um, we, need, we need to somehow increase the force if we can't increase the distance. If I can put these these elevators, like a conventional airplane, back here, you'd have all the pitch authority in the world. But since I can't, what I can do is I can increase the size of the flight control 
which thereby is deflecting more air. I mean, it's, that's the long and the short of it, but uh, I mean, there is more to it. But at the same time, it is increasing the amount of force that's being applied, and it does. It really works to, uh, to help this airplane. You've got to be careful because you can, you can overroll the airplane. I mean, in terms of if you left that throw at 100% with regards to roll, the airplane starts doing some really weird aerodynamic wonkiness, but its roll rates are insane. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it just, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's off the charts in terms of how it rolls. But what the beauty of increasing those flight controls and allowing the, when they're functioning as an elevator, it opens up more of the low speed envelope with more finite, precise control. And uh, it allows you to really get down and, and turn and uh, feel like you do have pitch control, better pitch control. It also diminishes the amount of aerodynamic basic blanking that you'll have when you're in a nose high pitch attitude. You know, think about it. Some of the airflow on the upper surface of the wing, it's essentially stalling out your, uh, your elevons. Just the fact that this can reach deeper past the boundary layers uh, in terms of deflecting free stream that otherwise is coming up here, it will continue to exert uh, that pitch change that you're trying to affect at lower and lower air speeds. So again, you need to be cautious. You need to provide limits within your radio setup in terms of how much roll you want to have available. Otherwise, the airplane is unbelievably twitchy on the stick if, if you left 100%. I did try it, and I mean, you're talking. It's, it's not a movement on the stick for a roll. It's a thought about a movement from <laughs> on the stick for a roll. But uh, when you dial it in, uh, you know, I'm running a conventional, probably 30% expo, and then same thing. Like I said, you, you dial the roll way back in terms of the roll, uh, you know, uh, roll commands, and same thing with the pitch. Um, I'm still giving it only a 75% pitch authority, and um, the airplane flies beautifully. It, it really flies well. With the throttle pitch coupling, it eliminates much of the nose up attitude um, that results from suddenly, you know, jamming the throttle. Um, and the airplane becomes great. I still do leave some pitch up, especially when you pull the throttle off. Uh, and the reason being is I still want the airplane to pitch up. You don't want to be in a situation where you're inadvertently diving towards the ground. It's always a safer recovery, especially when you're trying to decelerate. It would be counterintuitive to be decelerating and have the airplane pitch down because that's only going to increase your airspeed. So same thing when you're when you're backing off the throttle, I leave this airplane where it will have a tendency to bring the nose up ever so slightly. Um, and you know, most modern airplanes have designs uh, that integrate aerodynamic response in a similar fashion uh, to kind of get the nose and everything moving in the right direction. Anyway, um, sorry if this is too deep into the weeds. You know, uh, it's a great flying airplane. I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, the larger Elevons just put an absolute smile on my face. Um, it just had a, a much more locked in feel in terms of its uh, slow speed handling performance. And I mean, I was flying it and, and I know I say that this is not an airplane designed for confined spaces, but I was flying it in tighter and tighter spaces and just getting a real kick out of it. So. Anyway, that's it. Just thought I'd want to share. I appreciate it. Hey, leave your uh, thoughts and comments down below. Again, I am, uh, you know, a professional pilot by trade. Uh, this RC stuff is, is new to me. I'm probably using a lot of RC terms that are incorrect. Um, you know, my days of flight instruction were many, many years ago. Um, but, you know, I did close to 2,000 hours of instructing for other folks and, uh, you know, at all levels of aviation. And um, sometimes it's, it's, uh, I don't know if that translates or if that's something anyone is interested in. Hey, I appreciate your time. Have a great day. I will have the uh, build video out here uh, in the days ahead.